this video I'm gonna show you how to take pet feeding to the next level. Hi, how's it going? My name is Sebastian and today we're gonna make a pet feeder. But it won't be an ordinary feeder. It will be equipped with Wi-Fi, passive infrared sensor and couple more cool features. And yes, I know, I could buy something like this on Amazon or AliExpress. But come on, there's nothing better than designing and building something with your own hands. Although your pet will probably not give a shit whether you bought it or you made it yourself, but it'll definitely appreciate Sunday's breakfast, even if you are still asleep. Before we move on, all the files which we're gonna talk about today, you can find on my website, link in the description. Here. Okay, let's dive in. Let's talk about this project in general. My main inspiration was that ancient manual meat grinder. There's an ogre inside, which is the heart of the device, you might say. It moves the food forward. In our case, it's gonna be similar, with one key difference. There will be no grinding at the end of it. The auger will be powered by this small stepper motor. It is super cheap, it has gears lowering the RPM and increasing the torque, it doesn't require a lot of current, and it's easy to control. The next element is of course some kind of food container. It would be nice to use transparent material. Luckily, there are many translucent filaments on market nowadays. Thanks to this, we're gonna know how much food is left without looking inside. Besides, I like to be able to clean the food part of the device once in a while. That's why the electronic parts must be easily detachable. And by easily, I mean in a matter of seconds and without any additional tools. Ok, basic functionality is specified. Let's add some cool features like passive infrared sensor or buzzer and we are ready to draw a schematic. But as we can see from the electronic standpoint, this project isn't too complicated. Therefore, I'm not gonna spend much time on it. Let's jump straight into the fusion. As you can see, the central unit is Immortal ESP8266 chip. The power supply circuit has two steps, from 12 to 24 or even 32 volts to 5 volts, and from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. I did it this way because the stepper motor needs 5 volts. It is also the bigger power consumer in the entire device. Therefore, as a first step, I used a switching converter, not linear. It has more efficiency, so it will be much cooler during the operation. The ULN2003 chip is a stepper motor driver. It's just a few NPN transistors in one package, but generally that's all we need to control this motor. Here is the peer sensor, or to be more precise, here is the connector for the peer sensor. There are also a buzzer, LED and user switch. These switches are used for resetting and flashing the ESP chip. Now I'm gonna design the PCB layout, generate Gerber files, outsource the production, wait a few days and we can continue. Luckily, I've already done it all. And it looks like this. Alright, it's time to solder something. Like I said before, schematic, bill of materials and Gerber files you can find on my website. Link in the description. And now more difficult part of the project. Why it's more difficult you ask? Because that Annoying. cut food gets stuck wherever it can. And not moving over, surprisingly, limits the performance by 100%. So we need to work on this. Moreover, the electronic part has to be easily detachable from the non-electronic part. It is a food-related device, so it would be nice to wash it sometimes. That's why I spend a lot of time building these prototypes before I achieve my goals. But in the end, I'm super happy with the results. Let's take a closer look at these gems, because the solution I came up with, I think is quite neat. This is a finished model of pet feeder.
let's take a look inside. The first problem was the size of this hole. It was too small. The grains were stuck to each other right before it. As a result, the foot didn't even get into the chamber with the auger. Fortunately, the solution was very simple and probably obvious to everyone. A bigger hole. A more difficult problem to solve were the grains that got stuck at the end of the auger, no matter the shape and the size of the hole. They always wanted to jump there. I could use a bigger stepper motor that grinds those problematic seeds, but that would have been taking the shortcuts, and I don't like cutting corners. Adding this baffle into the funnel did the job. Thanks to it, the grains never reached the place where they could jam. As you can see, it is also placed above the auger to avoid blocking food in here. And it works like a charm. And that's pretty much it. So let's print the final version and put it all together. The last step is the software. So far, we've made a very nice device that does nothing. To turn it into a working pet feeder, we need to program the ESP chip. Because it's widely used, there are so many different ways to program it. I'm gonna focus on Home Assistant and ESP Home because I use it myself. If you use another smart system, I'm sure you'll find a way to make it work for you. Let's start, but don't worry. I'm gonna be as brief as possible. I know how you hate watching this coded part of my videos. And I'm not surprised at all. Boring. Therefore, I prepared a text version of this guide. Link in the description. In short, in ESP Home I added a new device. I configured how the stepper motor, buzzer, LED and button should work. I generated a binary file and then programmed the ESP8266 chip. For very first time, I need to use USB UART adapter for this. Each subsequent time can be programmed over the air. Finally, I create a new entity, a button on the Home Assistant dashboard, thanks to which I can communicate with the pet feeder. And now I'm gonna install my new feeder in the kitchen and check if my cat is gonna like it. If you find my video useful, don't hesitate to hit the like and subscribe button because more projects like this coming up.